I'm making my second video in one day. Talk about motivation. I'm just actually grabbing, or, or what is it, striking the the anvil while it's hot, some expression like that, just taking advantage of the motivation while I have it. Um, I wanted to talk about my feelings about understanding, or sorry, my feelings about understanding, my feelings about depression, or at least some things that I've come to, some understandings about it. I don't know what your greatest challenge with depression is, but I know that one of the hardest things for me to deal with with depression is my lack of motivation. And I think a large part of it stems from the fact that I feel like, what's the point? There's just, in my mind, no reason to do anything. If I make more music, who's going to listen to it? If I get out and jog, well, who cares? I mean, there are reasons underlying that and but namely it comes down to the fact that it feels like it doesn't really matter to anybody else if I do these kinds of things. And if you've watched my previous video, or if you haven't, um, basically I talked about how we all do need at least a little bit of uh, external validation, at least a little bit of, um, you know, people being proud of us or, or people noticing what we've done or, or caring about what we've done. And when you don't have that, at least for me, uh, it becomes very difficult for me to escape my feelings of depression and namely to do things. And uh, so, yeah, the uh, a large part of what makes it hard for me to do anything when I'm depressed is that I feel like there's no point to do it. Um, it doesn't really matter to anybody that I do it, and it's supposed to matter to you, and you're supposed to find the reasons that you do it for yourself. I mean, it, how can it matter for me, or for me, when I feel like, in the grand scheme of things in the world, nobody cares that I do it? That's. I'm not saying that that's right. I'm saying that that's what goes through my mind. It makes it difficult for me to um, deal with my uh, depression. But I've been thinking... Or, or trying to visualize depression in a different way. Because, you know, a lot of doctors and therapists and friends and people who want to help you and self-help books and whatever, they'll talk about how the most effective and long-term way to get out of depression is to get up and do stuff. And frankly, that is one of the hardest things to do when you're depressed, is to get up and do stuff. I mean, every, every single thing about you fights to stop you. And I call this the no voice. How it, like, it, well, maybe I can get up and go for a walk. No. Oh, well, maybe I should make myself dinner instead of ordering a no. Oh, well, maybe I should go to, go to the gym. No. Well, maybe I could play somebody in. No. Like, every single thing you think of doing, that voice, not literal voice, but that feeling that of darkness that just becomes crushing like a weight around you. And that made me start to visualize it in a different way, a way that I'm not usually used to doing or I've never thought of it before. And I think, or, or maybe you could try thinking of um, depression as a kind of miasma, which is like a poisonous cloud. Um, and it surrounds you. And the longer you stay in one place, not doing anything, the stronger it gets around you, the darker and the more hazy it gets around you. And I think perhaps the reason that doing other exercises as simple as just getting up and doing something when you wouldn't normally do it, I've started to visualize it as, as escaping the miasma, getting out of it. Um, the longer you're inside of it, the stronger it becomes, the louder that no voice becomes that tells you not to, the harder it gets to actually do something. But the only real way to break out of it, which you so want to do, you want to, you feel that feeling inside of you, that you hate that it's there, you hate that it's affecting you, but you're also kind of sitting there and waiting and wishing that something could break you out. You're, this is the kind of like situation where you're, you're waiting for someone else to save you or something else to save you, for something to just flick a light switch and for you to just suddenly like, oh, I don't feel it anymore. I'm suddenly free. I feel, I feel better. You know, it like the light shining on my head, just going from this to just ding, suddenly you're, you 
feel better. And unfortunately, there's nothing really sustainable that's going to do that. I mean, you can pop some narcotics and feel better for a certain amount of hours, but you pay the price for that because the more you push yourself in a good direction, in an unsustainable direction, the further back you have to fall. It's the pendulum effect. But speaking about things that actually can make a difference, getting up and doing things, try to think of it as you're inside of that miasma. And the only way to tell it, excuse my language, but tell it to fuck off, is to get out of it, to like break its hold on you. And oh, it's so hard, it's impossible. It isn't actually impossible. It may feel impossible. It may be so... It may have lied to you so convincingly to make you think that you don't have the power, but you literally still have the power over, I mean, provided you haven't been turned into a quadriplegic, and if that is your case, I'm very sorry. Um, but, a little off track here. If you're stuck within that miasma, the longer you're within it, the more convincing its prison is, but it's a prison of the mind. And it's very local. It is where you are right now. It is strongest where you are. And the only way to start weakening it is to get away from where you are currently as often as you can. Maybe not for 12 hours a day, but at least 12 times a day, even if it's for five minutes at a time. That's an hour, by the way. <laughs> Fifth mark. Is it? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> do a little math in my head here. <clears throat> but, I don't know. I, my thing that I'm starting to learn, especially since I've started going to the gym, which is way out of character for me, but so much needed, is that I put the context of my no voice and my depression and where it leads me if I allow it to, to dictate my decisions. Well, dictate my actions, not my decisions dictate my actions and and maybe let it decide for me or let it think for me, it keeps me in one spot. It keeps me not moving. It keeps me in front of... Um, it keeps me in front of YouTube. It keeps me in front of... Uh, well, that's really what it does. It just keeps me sitting on my chair and, and doing nothing. And it doesn't help me at all. It doesn't... There's no escape from it that way. And nothing is going to break into it it just isn't going to happen but that miasma that dark cloud is what it is is local and the more you get up and out of it the more you break its power on you the more often you get up and out of it the more you break its power on you another thing is um one of the issues with depression at least as far as i think when I'm out of it. Oh, sorry, my wife keeps calling. As far as I think when I'm out of it is that um, it lies. It lies a lot. It, it tells you that no matter what you do, it won't be better than the way you feel right now. It's not going to make you feel better. You could go, I could go for a walk. No, why bother? It's not going to change anything. You already know the roads that you walked down. And you already know the feelings that you're going to feel. And you know, like you don't want to talk to people. And there's going to be people. Like, it's just, it lies to you. It tells you, it paints a picture of what you think. Uh, or, or it paints a picture of what's going to happen before it happens. And it doesn't paint it in the best light. Um, but I liken depression to being like a pair of sunglasses that you can't take off. Let's say that depression is blue. And so you, it sticks those blue glasses on you and happiness is red or yellow or any other color. But when you're looking through those glasses, all you can see is blue. The fact is they're stuck there and you can't take them off. And that's what I like in depression to feeling like. But behind those lenses is the same world that you have felt happiness in. And even, like, when if you're depressed right now and you're watching this and thinking, well, I've never felt happy. Well, you have, but that's the other lie of depression is that it lies to you not just about the present, telling you nothing's good, but about the past and the future, too. It paints both of them in the same color. 
It tells you that the past was never good. Any happy memory that you once had is probably not as good as you remember it and it wasn't that good and blah, blah, blah. And it lies to you about the future, telling you that there's nothing good waiting for you. And it does this about every single little thing, but it is lying to you. It's a lie of depression. But anyway, part of that lie is telling you that no matter what you do, you're not going to feel any better. And it will gladly tell you this lie and make it as convincing as possible. It is a personalized lie telling it to you in the perfect language that you understand because it knows you best. And it, I mean, you know, it's manufactured who you are as a depressed person. Uh, and so it, it gives you that perfect language to, to convince you not to do anything. But it's a lie. It doesn't want you to break out of the miasma. And even though it doesn't seem like you're going to feel any better by doing something. Well, I've already done that before and it didn't make me feel, feel any better. Remember, it lies to you about the past too. So it might have made you feel better to do it in the past, but you can't remember it right now because you don't feel it right now. Lie, uh, de depression is just another emotion and it's another feeling. Just like if you've ever been punched in the face or fallen off of your bike or been kicked in the shins or stubbed your toe i mean just because you have had that happen in the past and you remember it happening doesn't mean you suddenly feel all the pain literally just by thinking about it it's like oh remember that time that you uh, got the stomach flu <laughs> you know it, it doesn't work like that and happiness is much the same and feeling better than depression is much the same that when you're depressed you, you can't really remember it but it's also the psychological aspect that it'll lie to you and tell you that it was never real. The only way to break out of your depression is to do things that your depression tells you not to do. Your depression wants you to harm yourself. Your depression wants you to just fade away. Your depression wants you to just sit in that miasma. And for whatever reason, I mean, it's not even a real thing, and yet it wants you to do all these things. It's got a mind of its own, and yet it has no mind. But getting up is getting out of the asthma, or the miasma, getting out of that fog. Going outside is getting further away from that, that fog, that sickening fog. Going to the gym or, or running or just doing something that you don't normally do and something that, you know, triggers much needed dopamine, like getting your heart pumping. These things, they're considered you know, beneficial and antidepressive because they do things, they trigger chemical responses in your body that don't do well for depression. I don't mean they don't do well for depressed people. I mean, it's not good for depression itself in the sense that it hurts depression and brings you out of it. It weakens the depression. But yeah, that was my, I mean, that's the whole purpose of this video was to give you that visualization that if you're facing depression right now and man, I feel you. I'm so with you. I was so down yesterday. I'm still not all the way up, nowhere near it, but I was so far down yesterday that I, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to, I'm not monetized. I could say whatever I want, but I don't want to go too far in a direction. Let's just say that it was the worst I've felt in a long time and I've had horrible days, but it, it really made me feel like it was necessary that I make this video and share my thoughts, or at least my visualization, and maybe you can use that visualization too, and that your depression is a darkness, a dark cloud that surrounds you, but it is local, it's stuck to that place. And when you get up and just go for a walk and stuff like that, if you don't instantly feel better, it's because, you know, some of it's clinging to you. You know, but it does get shaken off. It does get lost. The more you travel, the more you... I don't mean travel like go to Bermuda. I mean travel like away from the spot where your depression is strongest. And even if you have to come back to it, it is weaker because you took some of it with you and dropped it like dust on the ground for it to just be swallowed up by the environment outside. And don't listen to the voice in your head that tells you it won't be worth it because it's a lie. It's just depression lying to you. It tells you that you know how it's going to be and you know how it's going to feel. It's lying to you. I know it's hard. God, man, I know it's hard. 
I so feel you. But I hope that for you, you can find the strength to do it. I hope that I can help anybody who has been or is in a situation as deep as I was yesterday and as much as I'm still feeling today but obviously making videos for the first time in months I feel a little bit of motivation it's good but I hope it helps some because I know that I needed it I know that I need it I need that help that help that can't come from within that help that comes from either helping others or knowing that what you did was actually useful, that it was observed by somebody other than yourself and it was useful. And I hope that you can find that strength to at least shake some of your miasma, some of your fog off of yourself and take even one step in the direction of feeling better. And that's it for today. I thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Gatekiss.